Marie Antoinette Some people begin their day with a cup of coffee. Marie Antoinette, on the other hand, jump-started her mornings with a rich cup of hot chocolate. Hot chocolate was a status symbol in the 18th century. It was a drink for the elites and not the masses. When Marie Antoinette married Louis XVI in 1770, she brought her personal chocolate maker with her and he was given the official title of chocolate maker to the Queen. Marie favoured a combination of chocolate with orange blossom and sweet almonds. Here is a recipe from the time. Place an equal number of bars of chocolate and cups of water in a cafetiere and boil on a low heat for a short while. When you are ready to serve, add one egg yolk for four cups and stir over a low heat without allowing to boil. It is better if prepared a day in advance. Those who drink it every day should leave a small amount as flavouring for those who prepare it the next day. Instead of an egg yolk, one can add a beaten egg white after having removed the top layer of froth. Mix in a small amount of chocolate from the cafetiere, then add to the cafetiere and finish as if with the egg yolk. Kate Middleton's favourite drink is Jack Daniels. Although when she was a teen, she favoured a cocktail called Crack Baby, a mix of passion fruit juice, vodka and champagne. Edward, the Earl of Wessex, favours a dry gin and a classic Indian tonic water with a slice of lemon. Catherine of Braganza when Catherine arrived in England in 1662, tea was used medicinally. In contrast, she drank it often and likely influenced members of her court to do the same. Catherine's fondness quickly made it fashionable in England. First the ladies of the court and gradually those further removed from royal life developed a liking for the drink. When tea was consumed in such a grand setting, it was generally in the company of female friends within a bedchamber or closet, which is a small room for entertaining guests near the bedchamber. The tea itself and the delicate pieces of porcelain for brewing and drinking were displayed in the closet. Inventories for wealthy households during the 17th and 18th centuries list tea equipment in those small private closets or boudoirs. The mistress of the house would carry a key to the tea chest and mix different tea leaves to make her own blend to serve to her guests. Prince Harry once known affectionately as the party prince, Prince Harry was often seen drinking vodka and Red Bull. Prince Harry reportedly gave up drinking during Meghan Markle's pregnancy, but he was spotted last summer with Meghan and their son at a pub enjoying a couple of pints. Alexander the Great he wasn't just one of the ancient world's most prolific empire builders. He was also a heavy drinker. Like other Macedonians, he favoured wine and was known to drink it in great amounts. Alexander decided to organise Olympics in India. However, since locals weren't familiar with Greek sports, he decided to create a wine drinking contest instead. Indians weren't used to consuming alcohol and all contestants died. The winner, who was a Greek soldier, consumed the equivalent of 13 litres of unmixed wine, which is far stronger than wine that we know today, and he died four days later from alcohol poisoning. His drinking habits could have fatal consequences. Alexander once capped off a night of binge drinking by burning down the Persian city of Persepolis. 
Prince Philip is an avid beer lover, with Boddington's being his favourite. Boddington's is a straw golden hoppy bitter, which was one of the first beers to be packaged in cans containing a widget, giving it a creamy draft style head. King Tutankhamun Wine was a status symbol in ancient Egypt, since only the elite drank it. King Tut not only drank wine, but also employed his own personal winemaker. Tutankhamun was entombed with wine jars, as was custom, and researchers used the vessels to conduct analysis of ancient wine residue. They concluded that the young king had access to both red and white wine. Elizabeth I in the 16th century, many English men and women brewed beer for home consumption. Though beer was popular, Queen Elizabeth wasn't very partial to it. Elizabeth preferred sweet mead. In her earlier years before inheriting the throne, Elizabeth lived quite a domestic life. Mostly at Hever Castle, she was well respected for her gastronomic talents and she enjoyed making her own mead. The main ingredient of mead is honey, but Elizabeth, known for her sweet tooth, liked to add extra sugar. Princess Margaret. She enjoyed the famous grouse scotch with a drop of water. Her staff instructed those within her circle to always keep a bottle on hand in case she ever stopped by for an informal visit. A staff member claimed that if you didn't serve famous grouse, she could identify exactly what it was in its place. According to a friend, there could be unpleasantness with staff if her glass wasn't kept full or if the ice melted. Her friend said that was one of her tiny weaknesses. Catherine the Great she liked English stouts and boasted that she could hold her own against any English stout drinkers. Catherine's love of the dark beer actually contributed to the development of Imperial Stout. She contracted Anchor Brewery in London to create a dark strong stout for the Russian Imperial Court and so it brewed Imperial Stout. The stout needed to be extra strong as beer with a lower alcohol content often froze on the journey over to Russia. Princess Diana reportedly wasn't much of a drinker, but she did have one indulgence she enjoyed. Peach Bellinis were her beverage of choice, a blend of Prosecco and peach puree. Louis Fourteenth. Francis, King Louis XIV and his court at Versailles are synonymous with decadence. So it shouldn't be at all surprising that Louis loved pairing champagne with his food. Louis's love of bubbly actually caused some unexpected consequences. His physicians feared that his consumption of champagne wasn't healthy and instead urged him to drink other types of alcohol. Since true champagne only comes from a particular region, Champagne in northern France, alcohol makers in other French regions complained of what they considered royal favouritism. Henry VIII one of the most widely consumed beverages in early modern England was small beer, a nutrient-rich low-alcohol beer. Water was not generally safe to drink, particularly in urban areas, and milk was only available around calving time. Any excess milk was far too valuable for drinking and was saved for butter and cheese production. 
It took a lot of small beer to make a person drunk, but Henry managed it. He was almost never without a beer in hand. Catherine Parr, his sixth wife, also favoured small beer and later small ale. She kept barrels of it on hand at any one time. Princess Beatrice likes a white port and tonic. Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon's favourite wine was a burgundy from Chamberta. In fact, he never travelled without it. Napoleon loved the wine so much he once quipped, nothing makes the future look so rosy as to contemplate it through a glass of Chamberta. And also, in victory you deserve Chamberta, in defeat you need it. Apparently Napoleon was a master at the art of decanting a bottle of wine with a cavalry sword. Prince Charles favours 15 year aged Laphroaig malt and even has a special high growth edition of the whisky that he sells at his Gloucestershire estate shop. Prince William during his younger days when he frequented private clubs in London, Prince William had rather expensive tastes. He liked drinking a £135 cocktail called a treasure chest. The concoction served inside a wooden chest is a blend of peach liqueur, brandy and champagne. He reportedly did his fair share of shots at St Andrews and was said to have a taste for Sambuca. These days the father of three is happy with a pint of Guinness. A surprise royal watchers learned when he turned up at the Prince Albert pub in London to watch England face the Czech Republic in the Euro 2020 qualifier. Queen Victoria over the course of her many summers at Balmoral Castle in the Highlands of Scotland, Queen Victoria became a huge fan of Scotch whisky. Victoria wouldn't always drink it neat. She liked it mixed with claret, tea and soda water. Her most trusted servant, John Brown, was a man with a great fondness for whiskey too. He said, I favoured no man who does not like his glass. He made sure that Her Majesty was never wanting for a wee drop. Princess Eugenie enjoys vodka, soda with lots of lime. Elizabeth Bores Lion, the Queen Mother. Drinking was so much a part of the Queen Mother's daily rituals that she actually travelled with her own alcohol when conducting her royal duties. The Queen Mother's drink of choice was a Dubonnet and gin cocktail. It's simply three parts gin to one part Dubonnet French Rouge shaken with ice and garnished with a lemon twist. She once noted before a trip, I think that I will take two small bottles of Dubonnet and gin with me this morning, in case it is needed. Peter the Great he adored peppercorn brandy. In 1698, 26 year old Peter the Great visited England while on a European tour and discovered his favourite drink. One of his English drinking buddies introduced Peter to brandy laced with peppercorns. Peter's heavy drinking habits were so pronounced that he started a rowdy drinking club at court. Queen Elizabeth II. Elizabeth, like her mother, enjoys a gin and Dubonnet. She likes three parts Dubonnet, seven parts gin and a splash of lemon every day. King Edward VII. Edward liked berry, bros and Rudd's King's Ginger. The mixture of ginger, honey and a base of brandy was made specifically for the king. After his doctor visited the British company and asked for a liqueur to help cure the king's health problems, Edward said, 
One not only drinks it, one smells it, observes it, tastes it, sips it, and talks about it. Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex famously named her now defunct lifestyle blog, The Tig, after her favourite variety of red wine. Teen Yanello, Megan explained how her first taste inspired a whole new way of thinking. Cleopatra and her lover, Roman general Mark Antony, started a club called Inimitable Livers, a group dedicated to the cult of the mystical god Dionysus. The group engaged in nightly feasts and wine binges. At one club event, Cleopatra made a bet with Antony that she could spend 10 million sesterces on one dinner. That's a lot of money, estimated to be anywhere between £7 million and £60 million in modern currency, though it's impossible to determine the exact conversion. After ordering up a totally conventional meal, Cleopatra had one of her servants bring over a cup of strong vinegar. She dropped one of her priceless pearl earrings into the solution, waited for it to dissolve, and drank the slush. Cleopatra's favourite drink was white wine. She loved the stuff so much, she even bathed in it. Among Japanese royalty, the highest quality sake is always on the menu. One of the main sake makers that does business with the Japanese royal family is the Gekeken House. Their prize recipe is the choice drink of the imperial household of Japan. Zara Tyndall likes a glass of wine, red, white or rosé. This is always her drink of choice. And what's your favourite tipple? And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.